up with a word of silent prayer. Amen. All right. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. All right. So like the, um, the special music, um, the, the theme that I got from it was that the Lord is our God and our King. Amen. Amen. And as Swindon has gone over, that we are to see our God and our King working against the dragon throughout all the ages. Amen. Amen. And especially, most importantly, which is we should see how Michael our great, our great um, king, our great chief prince, working within where? In our hearts. Amen. Because this whole thing is about the Lord sitting upon our hearts, the Holy Spirit residing in us. Amen. Because this is the whole theme of the great controversy, that the Lord may sit once again upon our hearts and Satan may be removed and sin may be removed out of our hearts as well. Amen. Amen. So in, in Swindon's presentation, what were the two the two um, principles, if you remember, what were the two principles that he began his, his presentation with? What was that? Amen. Michael and the dragon. Because there's a difference. There's a difference with the, the name of Michael and with um, Christ. And there's a difference between calling him Satan and the dragon, right? Amen. Because there's a difference in the work. Amen? Amen. All right, then. So there has to be, we have to understand the difference. We must internalize the difference so that Satan can be unmasked within our hearts and minds. Amen? Amen? Because this is all what the great controversy is about. Unmasking the man of sin so that she may be made naked and bare before us. And we see her for all the disgustingness that she truly is. Amen? Amen. Because, and with that, we must shun her. Like all the unfallen world shun the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, right? Right? Amen. amen. We, must, we must say amen with, with more life because this is pertaining to our life. Amen. And if we do not say amen with more life, we may lose our life. Amen? amen? Because we put ourselves on the wrong side of the controversy. Amen? amen. So the Lord has placed upon my shoulders at this time to go over the first few verses in Daniel 11. And with this, we are to see these things transpiring within our hearts and minds as well. For um, Daniel 11, like, um, like Swindon emphasized, is speaking about just Daniel and Israel, or is it speaking about us at the end of the world? Amen. Us at the end of the world. It's a personal experience that we must have. Amen? Amen. All right. So beginning at the top with Daniel 11 and verse 1. It says, also I, in the first year of who? Darius the Mede. Darius the Mede. So we have our starting part. This is, Dari this, we are in a time period of Darius the Mede. And, and if y'all remember, who was also reigning with Darius the Mede? Cyrus the Persian. Amen. Cyrus the Persian. So we have these, 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 these two kings, these two horns, which are illustrated here in, in, the, um, in, in the 43 chart of the ram, these two kings reigning, these two horns. It says, also I, in the first year of Darius the Mede, even I stood to confirm and to strengthen him. Amen? Everyone's, uh, everyone's um, slides are going, going the same way? Okay. So for those who, who don't have it, we have a, a picture of Darius the Mede. And it says in verse 2, And now I will show thee the truth. Behold, there shall stand up yet how many? three kings in Persia, and what else? And the fourth shall be far richer than they all. An important point here that we need to understand. Do we count Darius and Cyrus in this? No. We start with Darius and Cyrus, and we count after, those kings after Darius and Cyrus. Amen? 
And we get down to the fourth, which is, which is far richer than them all. It says, and by his strength, through his riches, who is he? The fourth. The fourth. It says, through his riches, he shall stir up all the realm of Grisha. All against. Yes, all against the realm of Grisha. Amen. It says, <clears throat> in DAR 222, paragraph 3, it says, the angel, after stating that he stood in the first year of Darius to confirm and strengthen him, turns his attention to where? The future. The future. So these, these natural kings have an illustration where? The in the future. Amen. So Darius and Cyrus, they are... When do these nations come into prominence? When they come into contact with God's people. So, so Darius the Mede and Cyrus the Persian, when they came in contact with Daniel, that's when the, um, the Medes and the Persians came up into prominence in world history. Amen? Amen? So from that point, Daniel was seeing the kings that will come naturally, but then also who, who they will be pointing down where? In the future. In the future, spiritually. Amen? And Swindon made an important point when, um, when going over his study. That Daniel 1140 begins where? The time of the end. So when these, in the time of the end, when da that Daniel is seeing these things transpire, he's seeing people that are coming out after the time of the end. So if we take Daniel 1140 and Daniel 1140 to 12, 1 and 2 are speaking or have encapsulated the entire Bible. So Daniel, Daniel 11, 1 and 2 is also speaking of what? It's also in 40 to 12, 1 and 2. It's speaking about the time of the end. All these things are brought in about the time of the end. Go ahead. It's not just that. We will know take where Sister White was standing when she made the comment. Mm -hmm. He could only take you after 1904, 1906, where she made the comment. Amen. So all these things have to be repeated sometime after 1904. Amen. Amen. So all these things, what I'm trying to get at is all these things are to be repeated in the time of the end. Amen? Amen. From the time of the end onward, we are to see these, we are to see these two kings that arose and then four kings that came up afterward. Amen? Amen. We all understand? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, because the whole point is to deal with us, is to deal with our time. It's about the latter days. Amen. So it said, actually, I should must start over. I don't remember where I left off. It says the angel after stating that he stood in the first year of Darius to confirm and strengthen him, turns his attention to the future. Three kings shall yet stand up in, in Persia. To stand up means to what? Reign. To reign. It says three kings were to reign in Persia, referring doubtless to the immediate successors of Cyrus. These were Cambyses, and we have in the upper right corner the, the first image left. Amen. Of we have Cambyses, which is, and I have number one that shows he's the first. It says Cambyses, son of Cy um, Cyrus, Smyrdas, an impostor, Darius, Hist Darius Histopus. It says the fourth shall be far richer than they all. The fourth king from Cyrus was Xerxes, more famous for his riches than his generalship, and conspicuous in history for the magnificent campaign he organized against Grecia and his utter failure in that enterprise. He was to stir up all against the realm of Grisha. So in, these, in this Daniel 11 series, we're, we're going to be going over a, um, yes, an, an historical view of, of, of the history that, that took place, verse by verse. And we know there's many spiritual applications that can be taken out of this, but first we must lay these, these, natural, these, these natural things and put these things in place before we can dive into the more spiritual connotations of what the, the verse is speaking of. But there are very, there's, there's a lot of very deep truths in these, these few verses. Amen? Amen? But we must first lay the foundation because the Bible teaches us that first comes that which is what? Natural. natural, then comes that which is spiritual. So I may, I may make insinuations of things that are happening even now, but they, we must see first the, the, the natural applications. And we're going over a very um, 
a rough, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Synopsis of what these, um, what, what has taken place in this history. But if you want to get a more in-depth, our pioneers in the past have gone in-depth of these things. And by a diligent search of our pioneer writings and the Bible, you will get a, an, a minute image of what actually took place in those, in those times. Go ahead. Amen. And so because of that, the Lord can only teach us by your first introducing natural things before the spiritual things. And so it's important that we keep that model because that's the model for us. Amen. Yeah. It's a method of teaching to bring us back to the, amen, the state of Adam and even higher. Amen. Okay. So, so after Darius and Cyrus, we have Cambyses, Smyrtus, Darius, and then Darius the Great, and then we have Xerxes. Amen? All right, we have to keep that in mind. We count after Darius and Darius the Mede and Cyrus the Great. Okay, Daniel 11, 3 and verse, Daniel 11, 3 and verse 4 it says, And a mighty king shall stand up that shall rule with great dominion and do according to what? His will. And do according to his will. And when he shall stand up, his kingdom shall be what? And shall be divided toward the four winds of heaven, and not to his posterity, nor according to his domain, which he ruled. For his kingdom shall be plucked up even for others beside these. Well, those, amen. Besides those. It says, Xerxes was the last Persian king who invaded Grecia. It says, and the prophecy therefore passes over the nine successors of, of Xerxes in the Persian Empire, and next introduces Alexander the Great. Having overthrown the Persian Empire, Alexander became absolute monarch of that empire to, to the fullest extent it was ever possessed by any of the Persian kings. So, so this is a this is a hard work that the Lord is showing us, right? So when when Satan took possession of, of, this, um, of, this, of this planet and he stood up, what happened, what happened immediately? His kingdom was broken because right after, um, right after Adam, Adam and Eve ate of the fruit, who came down to, 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 to show them a type of the Day of Atonement? Christ. Christ immediately came down as, as, his, as the great high priest to show the work of atonement. So as soon as Satan stood up, his kingdom was broken. You understand? All right. So all these are showing the work of, of Christ and Satan. Christ and um, Michael and the dragon. Amen. It's a, it's a part. It's a part of, this, of the great controversy. It says, His dominion was great, including the greater portion including the greater portion of, then, of the then known habitable, 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 habitable world. Was not Satan reign over, reigning over the then habitable world? Yep. Okay. It says, and he did according to what? His to his will. He didn't do according to God's will. He tried to set up his own, his own will. It says, his will led him to 323 B.C. into a drunken debauch as, the, as a result of which he died as, as the fool dieth, and his vainglorious and ambitious projects went into sudden, total, and everlasting eclipse. Amen. Revelation 18. This is, this is Satan. It says, The kingdom was divided, but not to his posterity. It was plucked up for others beside those. Within 15 years after his death, all his posterity have fallen victims to the jealousy and ambition of 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 his leading generals. Amen. Continuing on, it says, The death of Alexander left 36 able generals, most of whom were with the army at, at Babylon, while others were stationed as governors at pivotal points in the, in the, in the empire. The first act of the new government 
was an effort to secure the stability of the empire by appointing these generals to be governors of the various provinces over districts or districts. The ablest generals to the most important provinces, of course, each one with full military power in his province or district. So this is, this is, um, this is the work of Satan upon the earth. He not only could he not have full control of a man, but he also couldn't control his angels. So, so even in, in the earth, when he divided the land, these 36 generals had control over these, these provinces. But, but as we see in, um, in the story of o, over the reign of Cyrus's mind, that, that, he, him, that Satan himself had to be the one to try to persuade um, Cyrus to not release Israel. Everyone familiar with that story? Amen. So, because who then came to, to war after Satan? Michael. So even in, in, in that time, from Cyrus down to, um, to uh, Alexander, we see the warring between Michael and the dragon. Amen. Leave him. And, but he's also on the side of the king of Grisha telling him, take this, take that, take that, because, because he has to go to his property. And someone has to tell him what to do so that he could come down to Rome. Because at the point of the vision, is to take you down. Down to Rome. So, we just mark this down for reference. So we have Alexander, and when he was broken, he went into these 36 generals. GEP 189, paragraph 4, says each of these provi um, provincial governors was ready to grasp all that he possibly could of, of the empire. And each of the leading generals was ready to grasp for himself the whole of the empire. It says the infant king was held by, by all merely as a puppet before themselves and the world as a means of advantage. In, in the nature of things, war was inevitable. It began very, very shortly and continued so generally and so persistently that it was that it is literally true that war became and was considered a vocation as much as any everyday occasion and 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 was carried on more as as a test of strength and military skill than as involving any any matter of either principle or passion it is essential to, to an intelligent understanding of the history that the ambitions and the fortunes of these generals and their charges shall be, shall be followed, though it will have to be done as briefly as possible, consistent with retaining the thread of the universal story. It says in DAR 223 paragraph two, it says the kingdom was rent into four divisions and take a possession and take a possession of by Alexander's four ablest or, or perhaps most ambitious and unprincipled generals. It says Cassander, Lysimachus, Seleucus, and Ptolemy. So after Alexander, we got down to these, these 36 generals, and now we have these, these last four. Daniel 11 and verse, verse 5. And it says, And the king of the south shall be strong, and one of his princes, and he shall be strong above him, and have dominion. His dominion shall be a, a great dominion. 
says, the king of the north and the king of the south are many times referred to in the remaining portions of this, of this chapter. It says, it therefore become, becomes essential to an understanding of the prophecy clearly to identify these powers. Because who is the true king of, who's the true king of the north? Christ, who's the true king of the south? Satan. Yes, yes. The, the, in, in this context, the, the true king of the south is, is Satan, the, the dragon. Amen? Amen? So, yeah, so in reference, in coming down through, through history, after these, these, um, these 36 broke down into four, the, the main context and what we have to follow are, are the king of the north and the king of the south. Amen, Michelle? Amen. It says, it says, it therefore becomes essential to an understanding of the prophecy clearly to identify these powers. When Alexander's empire was divided, the different portions lay toward the four winds of heaven, west north, east, and south. It says these, these divisions, of course, to be reckoned from the standpoint of Palestine or Jerusalem. It says the native land of the prophet. So these four were broken down to north, south, East and West. And the picture here on the, the right side is, is obviously of, of Jerusalem, is the divisions of the, of the tribes and how they were divided up into the North and the South Kingdom. It says, that division of the empire lying west of Palestine will thus constitute the kingdom of the west. Because remember, as we said earlier, these, these kingdoms come into prominence when they come in contact with God's people. It says, that division of the empire lying west of Palestine will thus constitute the kingdom of the west. That lying north, obviously the kingdom of the north. It says, that lying east, that will be what? The kingdom of the east. It says, and that lying south, which would be what? The kingdom of the south. The kingdom of the south. It says, the, the divisions of Alexander's kingdom with respect to Palestine were situated as follows. It says, Cassander had Greece and the adjacent countries with lay, which lay to the west. Lys, which lay to the west. Lysimachus had, um, had Thras. Which, which then included Asia Minor and the countries lying on the Hellespont and uh, the Bosporus, which lie to the north of Palestine. It says, Seleucus had Syria and Babylon, which lay principally to the east, and Ptolemy had Egypt and the neighboring countries, which lie to the south. So these are the divisions that, that had that, these are the divisions that, that broke up Alexander's kingdom and which now surrounded the um, which surrounded Israel, which surrounded God's people. And this is naturally how it how it looked in um, on the earth, how it looked in in proportion to the time. It says, Cassander was very soon conquered by Lysimachus. It says, and his kingdom. It says, Greece and Macedon annexed to, to Thrace, and Lysimachus was in turn conquered by Seleucus, by Seleucus, and Macedon and Thrace annexed to Syria. Thrace. It says, these facts prepare the way for an application of the text before us. The king of south, Egypt, shall be strong. Ptolemy annexed Cyprus, Phoenicia, um, Caria, Cyrene, Cyrene, and many islands and cities to Egypt. Thus was, was his kingdom made strong. So this is, this is how this, the, um, the verse was fulfilled. 
and where the, the kingdom of the south became strong by conquering all these nations and, and these people. And thus how we, we broke these, how they broke these four divisions into now these, these lasting two between the king of the north and the king of the south. It says, and the king of the south shall be strong, and one of his, Alexander's, princes shall be strong above him. It says, this must, this must refer to Seleucus, because he was, um, he was the king of, of, of um, which was it? Yes, he was the king of the, of the north. It says, this must refer to Seleucus, who, as already stated, having annexed uh, Macedon and Thrace to Syria, thus became possessor of three out of the three of three parts out of the four of Alexander's dominion, and established a more powerful kingdom than that of Egypt. It says Seleucus met Lysimachus and slew him in battle. This reduced the four divisions to two, the rulers of which were afterward distinguished as kings, kings of the north and south. It says Seleucus. The king of the north now held territory which had formerly belonged to the three generals. It says, while, to, while Ptolemy retained the southern division. It says, this agrees with the, the words of Gabriel to Daniel. The fifth verse, according to Spiro, reads, then shall, the king, then shall the king of the south, even one of Alexander's princes, be strong. Yet shall another exceed him in strength, and have dominion and grand dominion shall be his dominion. It says, the Ptolemy who gained Egypt was surnamed Suter, says, or Savior. And on his death, he was succeeded by his son, Ptolemy um, Philadelphus. So, so Ptolemy, he had the, the, the name Suter, which is Savior. So now we have uh, Michael, which is which is to the north, which is our savior. And now we have the one in the south, which is now naming himself as a savior as well. So we have to see how these things um, play out throughout history because this is how um, Satan works even within our hearts, where Satan comes disguised or cloaked as a savior, but and comes cloaked as, as one who is trying to give life, but he's only bringing death. Amen? Amen. Oh, yes. Amen. No, oh, keep in mind, is is a is a brief, it's a brief history of, of what's of what's um of what's taking place. Yes, amen. Of of God's people. Now let's go to Daniel eleven and verse six. And it says and the end of years, they shall join themselves together. For the king's daughter of the, of the south shall come to the, to the king of the north to make an agreement. But she shall not retain the power of the arm. Neither shall he stand, nor his arm. But she shall be given up, and they that brought her, and, they, and he that begat her, and he that strengthened her in these times. Now, when it, um, as we go forward in, in explaining in these verses, I don't fully have a, a full grasp of how to, how to see these things spiritually playing out in, in our hearts, but I know the Lord will open up these things and, and expound on, on what, how this is applicable to each and every one of us. Alexander. We're Alexander. 
and uh, we were these kings. And in order mm-hmm. to maintain our hold in these kingdoms, we go marry. You know, there are many churches they, yeah. they marry to the to the to the church, the world council of churches. Amen. In order to maintain themselves, what what they think is to maintain themselves. And and so you can see at least that spiritual application. Marriage is an alliance, and these marriages was only to defend what they had. Amen. And then to keep what they keep, keep the territory. Yeah. Yes. That that yes, that's one of the one hundred percent um true. But I'm speaking of the when we when we get down yeah. to it with the with the two the yes the play by play of these of these these two um, wives. Okay, can everyone see the the picture in the back? Okay, I'll I'll say who that is afterwards. It says there were frequent wars between the kings of Egypt and Syria. Especially was this the case with Ptolemy Philadelphus, the second king of Egypt, and Antiochus Theos, the third king of Syria. It says they are left. They at length agreed to make peace upon con- upon condition that Antiochus Theos should put away his his former wife Laodice. Now in this, um, I'll use what 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 our what Jeff has, has said in, in the past, where we have to put away our old wife and, put, and take our new, our, our new husband, actually, not our old wife, but we have to put away of self. I'll put away our own self, our old self, and marry, be married to Christ. Amen. Amen. Yes. It says they are left agreed to, to make peace upon upon condition that Antiochus Theos should put away his former wife, Laodice, and and her two sons, and should marry um, Berenice, the daughter of Ptolemy Philadelphus. Ptolemy accordingly brought his daughter to Antiochus, bestowing with her an immense dowry. So the picture in back is, is Berenice. This is this wife that was taken up by, um, by Antioch. The yes, the king of the south, the Ptolemy. Of the Amen. <coughs> 2.26, paragraph 1. says, but she shall not retain the power of the arm. That is, her interest and power with Antiochus. It says, then says the prophecy, neither shall he, Antiochus, stand, nor his arm, or see. So this is, Uriah Smith is explaining each one of these, these symbols. It says, Laodice, being restored to favor and power, feared lest in the, the fickleness of his temper, Antiochus should again disgrace her and recall Berenice, and conceiving that nothing short of his death would be an effectual safeguard against such a contingency, she caused him to be poisoned shortly after. Neither, okay, yes, that is the, that's the part where the spiritual understanding I have not yet um, uh, grasped, that where Bernice and Laodice go in this, this back and forth um, between one another. It is, all that I'm, I'm seeing is that the same spirit that took place in the husband now transferred to, to them. So where, where Ptolemy and Antiochus was warring at once with one another, that war just transferred itself to their, their wives. And even though they brought themselves to one table to, um, to make a treaty, their wives continued in this, in this war. So it is, so even with us who are married, we must guard against ourselves and our families so that our wives do not continue in the, the same sins that we and ourselves are trying to put away. Amen? Yes, yeah, that's why I said they. Mm-hmm. Yes, amen. Continuing on. says, neither did his seed by Berenice succeed him in the kingdom. For, 
for Laodice so managed affairs as to, as to secure the throne for her eldest son, Seleucus Callinicus. Paragraph 2 says, But she, Bernice, shall be given up. Laodice, not content with poisoning her husband, Antiochus, caused Berenice to be murdered. And they that brought her, her Egyptian, her Egyptian women and attendants, in endeavoring to defend her, were many of them slain with her. So those that, were, that brought her to um, the north were also slain as well. And he that begat her, whom she, whom she brought forth, that is her son, who was murdered at the same time by order of Laodice. And he that strengthened her in these times, her husband, Antiochus. So in explanation of, of, of these verses, it's the, it's the ones that, that brought her, that beget her, and even the ones that, that strengthened her. Antiochus, her sons, and even the ones that, um, that came with her from the south to the north. Amen? The, the north, north and the south. And the south. So in between the two times at the end, I believe this illustrates the, 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 the tussle that's happening. For supremacy. Yeah, in, in for supremacy until we come down to the end. And, and, and um, well, Rome stands up, but Rome is typifying Christ. Who, who, who stands up at the end? Amen. Can I have a reader for Daniel 11, 7 to 9? Verse 9. So the king of the south shall come into his kingdom and shall return to his own land. Be the Lord come and move forward. Amen. It says, This branch out of the same root with, um, with Bernice was her brother. This is DAR 226, paragraph 5. Told me, you're a good. Amen. He had no sooner succeeded his father, Ptolemy um, Philadelphus, in the kingdom of Egypt, than burning, than burning, the, burning to avenge the death of his sister, Berenice, he raised an immense army and invaded the territory of the king of the north, that is, of Seleucus Callinicus, who, with his mother, Laodice, reigned in Syria. It says, and he prevailed against them, even to the conquering of Sil Syria, um, Cilicia, the upper parts beyond the, the Euphrates, and also all Asia. But hearing that a sedition was raised in Egypt, requiring his, his return home, he plundered the, the kingdom of Seleucus, took 40,000 40, talents of silver and precious vessels, and 2,500 images of gods. Among these were the images which Cambyses had formerly had formerly taken from Egypt and carried into Persia. The Egyptians, being wholly given to idolatry, bestowed upon Ptolemy the title of Eurigetes, or the benefactor, as a, com as a compliment for his having thus, after many years, restored their, their captive gods. Amen. This is all this is. Yep. It's going to the right, and now it's swinging back to the left because the left is the south. But when it swings back, the left takes all the riches. Oh, yes. Amen. That, that, that really, when you look at our government today, the spending, yeah. they're taking the riches. Mm -hmm. This is really what they're doing. So you can see this principle. Okay, this is how the left operates. When they come in, they leave with the riches. So we have to look out for, for this administration. 
administration to, to take America's riches, whatever uh, the riches represent, they're taking it on their way out. Mm-hmm. Most of them are willing to reach a certain point, but here the bell come and, and no forth, further. And on their way back, they're just going to take whatever and go with it. And now the North comes up and has to fight back. But man, he's just teaching us this battle. Like between, between the North and the between, South. Between Democrats and Republicans. Amen. This, this constant... It was constant um, battle. And like um, a point that I want to, that I saw in here as well was, as we rightfully said, that Christ is also, Christ is the king of the north and the king of the, of the south. But it's also saying that, that here Christ, the benefactor, he says, having taken all of, all of, um, all of the land, he also restored their captive gods. And this is, this is the, the, the small g. So oh, yeah. where God's people, amen, he's taking all, all the souls, all those who are captive, they're going to be taken back with, with Christ. Yeah. Amen. And I think it was, it's, it's Paul that says, he says, did not, did not he say that we are all um, gods? I think that's... Yeah, yes. Yes, amen. Yeah, yes, amen. Verse 10 says, But his son shall be stirred up and shall assemble a multitude of, of great forces, and one shall certainly come and overflow and pass through. Then shall he return and be stirred up even to his, to his fortress. Amen. This is yes. Well, not a pendulum swings to the to the other side. It says the sons of the sons of Seleucus Callinicus were Seleucus Soranus and Antiochus Magnus. It says these both entered with zeal upon the work of vindicating and avenging the cause of their father and their country. And this is how we are to be. We are to be. We are to enter upon the work with zeal, upon avenging the cause of our father. And his country, because this is this is the Lord's creation. The earth is the Lord's creation. It says the elder of these, Seleucus, the elder of these, Seleucus, first took the throne. He assembled a great multitude to recover his father's dominions. Now we need to also take a life lesson with, with this as well. Even though a a you're doing a work, it doesn't mean you will take that work to its completion. For one is to is to um, plant and another is to water, amen. And this is showing the the very same thing. For we'll see that Seleucus goes and he makes the great army, but it is Antiochus that goes forward and, and does um, does the, the 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 work of going to war. It says the elder of the Seleucus first took the throne. He assembled a great multitude to recover his father's dominion. But being a weak and pusillanimous um, prince, both in body and estate, destitute of money and unable to keep his, his army in obedience, he was poisoned by two of his generals after an inglorious reign of two or three years. This is nice because I'm, I'm, seeing, I'm seeing Christ in this for saying that. Christ was wasn't rich in body or in or in, or in a, in a state because he was he was beaten down and he he had no where to lie his his head and he was destitute of, of money and unable to keep his army in obedience Judas he rose up and left he became a traitor it says he was poisoned by two of, of his generals after an inglorious raid of two or three years how long was Christ's ministry three years it says, his more capable brother, Antiochus Magnus, was thereupon proclaimed king, who, taking charge of the army, retook, retook um, Seleucia and recovered Syria, making himself master of some places by treaty and others by force of arms. You have, you have a point? Yeah, you're saying that um, the second one is showing the... Um, the, the the second coming? No, the side of God. The first one is showing man. Amen. Amen. Yes. That's where I was going. You, you okay. have to see man in the first one. Yes, and yes. See that Christ is the more capable brother. Yeah. We mm-hmm. fail, and Christ comes in and take up the work 
where, 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 where we fit. Amen. The first and second Adam. Yeah, and um, it says a truce followed, wherein both sides treated for peace, yet prepared for war. So these are these two making um, lies at, at one table. It says after which Antiochus returned and overcame in um, in battle um, Nicholas and the Egyptian general, and had thoughts of invading Egypt itself. Here is the one who should certainly overflow and pass through. Go ahead. I, I would make the point that when the return says overflow and pass over, it is not in connection. It is in connection to the verse that talks about the Roman general, not overflow, two people lies at one table. Mm -hmm. the, the, the natural application of that is about two Romans. Yes. But notice he's taking the principle book because that's what it says. We have to see the Principles Amen. of the great controversy as we as we study these things. And so you could see this this lies at one table is whose principle? Satan's, Satan's principle. So you could see yeah, in yeah. Grisha, Satan's principle, and then when you get to Rome, you see the very same principle. Amen. For it's the lamb like beast. The very yeah. same principle. I mean not lamb like leopard like beast. Yes, Amen. the very never changes. The very yes. same yeah. principle. Only we have to distinguish the natural fulfillment from making a lesson out of that natural fulfillment. Yes, amen. Uh, amen, yes. Because you don't want to get confused when you go read that verse and it says, two shall speak lies on one table. Yes, and, and you're making... That's what Rochelle was talking about. Yes. Uh -huh. so, amen. Okay. Daniel 11, verse 11. It says, and the king of the south, and the king of the south shall be moved with, with color. And this, this color is, is bitterness or anger. And shall come forth and fight with him, even with the king of the north. And he shall set forth a great multitude, but the multitude shall be given into his hand. It says, Ptolemy Philopater succeeded his father, Eurgates, in the kingdom of Egypt, being advanced to the crown not, not long after Antiochus Magnus. Um, Antiochus Magnus had succeeded his brother in, in the government of Syria. He was a most luxurious and vicious prince. He says, but, and I would like to bring this together with, with Xerxes, because Xerxes was also a very luxurious um, um, king. He, he reigned very luxuriously, just like, um, just like Philippator. So we can see another aspect of the work of Xerxes in our time, by bringing in um, Ptolemy Philippator. Amen. Because they're all being um, used by the dragon. But does not mean that, that, that Michael is not also making sway in, in their actions and in what they're doing. Amen. It says, He was a most luxurious and vicious prince, but was at length roused at the prospect of an invasion of Egypt by Antiochus. He was indeed moved with choler for, for the losses he had sustained and the danger which threatened him. And he came forth out of Egypt with a numerous army to check the progress of the Syrian king. The king of the north was also to set forth a, a great multitude. It says, in the battle, Antiochus was defeated. And his army, according to prophecy, was given into the hands of the king of the south. This is where you see Michael. Amen. According to prophecy. Yes. Michael. Yes. It says 10,000. Oh, yes, because the Lord is the one who's, who's setting up these kings and taking down these kings. So he would not allow one to, to go further than he wants that one to go. It says 10,000 foot and 3,000 horse were slain, and over 4,000 men were taken prisoner. Ptolemy, while Ptolemy's army, while of Ptolemy's army, there were slain only 700 horse, and about twice the number of infantry. So these men, though going, um, though reigning in these, these various nations, we are to see how, how Satan is, 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 Functioning these, these men to do his, his bidding, but also being halted in certain forms by, in certain ways, by, by Michael. He would not come. And no further. Amen. So. It's nice, but I'm going to go back to Daniel. You know, um, Gabriel said, 
that there is none that holdeth me in these things, but Michael the prince. So everything he's telling Daniel, Michael the prince is directing it. Amen. So when you read it, it's it's Christ. Michael is telling them what to do. That's what that's how you see Michael. Mm. And that every move, it's really Christ. And Christ says, "Is there?" So the next thing that happened is that, and then he stops them and he says, "The next thing that happened is." And so as Gabriel is telling Daniel, Christ is telling Gabriel. Amen. And these men have to perform it in the way Christ said it was going to happen. Amen. The Within the wheels, Amen. yes, wheels. the intricate yeah. play of, of human yeah. events. Amen. And mm -hmm. and how Michael, our great prince, our chief prince, is Amen. overseeing all these these events. Amen. But a, a a takeaway that we we need to go with is is that this whole this whole um, controversy is about the north and the south. Amen. Though these these players in there in this may change. It is still Michael and the dragon warring against one another. So as my brethren go forward with the other verses of, of Daniel 11 down to um, chapter 12, we shall we'll see how the, the north and south, Michael and the dragon are warring against one another throughout these very ages. Amen. Amen. All right. Shall we close with a, a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you, O Lord, for these grand truths that you've given unto us. And as we lay these things out, Lord, we pray that, that a greater understanding may, may come for it, that we may see your hand in all these things, that we may be led and guided by your Spirit, and that as we go over the old, Lord, you, you, you have stated that, that new things may flash into our mind, and that's how we are to know that your Holy Spirit is working. So I pray that that even now, as we look over these things in our, in our private times, that much light may flash from them, and we may understand the, the, the workings within our hearts, that the man of sin may be revealed. Help us and lead us through, through these, the, the, this play of, of human events down to our time and, and, and the ending of this great controversy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.